if you're a business owner, there's gonna come a point where you need a stronger tech stack to have a clear picture of everything all in one place. From startup to enterprise, NetSuite is your one-stop solution. Visit netsuite.com slash SPI to download their KPI checklist for free and support this podcast too. If you do find yourself buried in manual work or struggling to have a clear picture of your business, you should know three numbers. 37,000, 25, and one. 37,000, that's the number of businesses which have been upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. 25, NetSuite turns 25 years old this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. And the number one, because your business is one of a kind. So you can get a customized solution for all of your KPIs and one efficient system when, with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need to grow, all in one place. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash SPI. That's netsuite.com slash SPI to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash SPI. There was once a time when building a website was a massive undertaking and a huge pain, something that you would need to clear your entire schedule for. Well, guess what? Those days are over, and now you can build a professional, sparkling website in just seconds, thanks to Hostinger. In fact, I recently did this, and I shared the process on my YouTube channel, and it was absolutely mind-blowing, especially considering it took like days on end previously when I first started building websites. This tool is amazing, and I was using AI to do it. So Hostinger is a top highly rated global web hosting and website creation brand, right? And all you have to do to build a website is answer three questions. Here it is. You enter your brand name, you select the website type, you describe your business, and then you can customize it further with a drag and drop editor. It's literally that simple. I just went through this process. I promise you it is the easiest way to build a website. And it also offers some AI-driven SEO-friendly copy, an AI logo maker. Plus, they make all this super affordable. It's less than $3 a month, including a free domain name. So create a live website now at hostinger.com slash SPI. And listeners of this podcast can enter SPI for 10% off your order and a free domain name. H-O-S-T-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash SPI. And use the code SPI for 10% off and a free domain name. It's incredible. Now back to the show. This is a Smart Passive Income Podcast with Pat Flynn, session number 136. Welcome to the Smart Passive Income Podcast, where it's all about working hard now so you can sit back and reap the benefits later. And now your host, he has a backpack with his name on it, Pat Flynn. Want to stop grinding through resumes and just meet your match already? Well, you can with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. It's your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data, plus their matching engine helps you find quality candidates fast. And it works like really fast. In fact, by the time this ad's over, 23 new hires will have been made on Indeed according to Indeed data worldwide. It's the perfect match of speed and quality. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites and... I think Indeed is the place to go. It's easy to manage. Everything is in just one spot. The interview process, it's scalable with you and your business as it grows. Like there's no other platform you would need than Indeed. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored ad job credit to get your jobs and more visibility at indeed.com slash smart passive. Just go to indeed.com slash smart passive right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash smart passive. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire, you need Indeed. We entrepreneurs are at our desks a lot. So having solid equipment is super important. And a sit stand desk can make a huge difference as many folks on our team will attest to. If you haven't tried one yet, this offer from Uplift is for you. Plus you can support the show at the same time. Visit upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. Over a million customers have chosen Uplift Desk. Innovative product designs, reasonable pricing, same-day shipping, free accessories with every desk. You can see why they're such a big hit. And did I mention the industry-leading 15-year warranty? And that covers the complete desk, by the way, not just the top or some fine print like that. Moving while you work is just healthier. And Uplift Desk provides a state-of-the-art experience. They're stable, made of very solid materials. There's over 100 desktop choices and customizations available. Just the choices for material for your desk are amazing, all the way from laminate to eco to bamboo to solid wood. If you want to build the workstation of your dreams, I highly recommend checking them out. 
Go to upliftdesk.com slash SPI for 5% off your order. That's U-P-L-I-F-T desk.com slash SPI to get 5% off your entire order. What's up, everybody? Pat Flynn here, and thank you for joining me in episode 136 of the Smart Passive Income Podcast. I'm so excited because we have a great guest on the show, but really quick, I just want to mention something about that backpack that the uh, voiceover guy, John Melly, was talking about. I feel like my backpack is gotten a little famous lately because when I go to conferences, a lot of people are like, where's your backpack if I'm not wearing it? Or you know, they even want to take pictures with it if they see it, which is really interesting. But it's a, it's a red backpack. It says, hello, my name is Pat, similar to what you see on the sidebar of smartpassiveincome.com, which was the purpose of me getting it. And it's worked out really well because I tell people, hey, if you're going to a conference and I happen to be there, just look out for the red backpack. And a lot of people came up to me and they're like, hey, I knew it was you because I saw the backpack. So anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there. So if you're ever at a conference and you see a red backpack that says Pat on it, uh, it's probably me. So feel free to come up and say hi. I'd love to say hi back. Now, anyway, going back to today's content, we have an amazing guest, David Seitman Garland from the rise to the top dot com is with us. And what's interesting about David and sort of his journey, and he'll talk a little bit about it in the beginning of this episode before we get into the meat of the show, which is going to be extremely valuable to you, a lot of you who anybody who wants to create a digital course or an online course, because that's exactly what he's an expert in right now. He's helping teach thousands of people do this and and not just like little rinky dinky, you know, $97 courses. This is like courses that you could charge quite a bit of money for. And we talk exactly about how to create those products and courses, what is, what's it like to sell it and market it, and also pricing is a big topic that we talk about today as well. And this is going to be followed up by an episode with Amy Porterfield in episode 137, where we can take your digital product or any other product that you might have, a membership site, whatever, but it sort of stems along or goes along with this particular episode today. And Amy in the next episode is going to talk about how to create a three-part video series to help launch that with a bang. So we'll get to that in the next episode. But with this episode, I'm really excited because David is is one of the nicest guys I know. He used to have a podcast actually with his brand, The Rise to the Top. He was one of the originals to interview successful entrepreneurs. I feel like it was him and Andrew Warner over at Mixergy.com and two completely different styles and, and I love them both. But David is just super friendly. I was on his show and it was one of the easiest interviews to do because he just makes you feel so comfortable when he's there interviewing you. And uh, I, I, I feel like I got a lot of inspiration from, from David and his podcast from back in the day. But he sort of dropped the podcast, which was a big deal. Um, and, and, you know, I missed the show. But he's gone on to focus on teaching people how to create these online courses. And he's done an amazing job. And, and actually, a lot of the questions I ask are extremely selfish in this episode because I myself am looking for the best ways to create an online course. And so you're going to hear this conversation. You're going to get a lot out of it. So without further ado, let's welcome David Seitman Garland from therisetothetop.com, who's going to teach us all about how to build online courses that sell. What's up, everybody? I'm so happy to welcome my good friend, David Seitman Garland, to the podcast with us. I've been on his show a couple times, and now he's on with us. He's going to drop some knowledge bombs. And uh, David, what's up? Welcome to the show. Hey, Pat. What's up, man? I, uh, yeah, bringing my bombs, you know, full of knowledge here. So thanks for having me. It's going to be great. <laughs> Dude, this is so cool. And I first just want to congratulate you on the upcoming new addition to your family. I'm so happy for you. How's all that going in the household and stuff? Uh, I am I am super stoked. I mean, it's it's a, it's a thing. So, you know, I have a little girl, for those that don't know, that are that's uh, due on Valentine's Day. So very excited. About, I mean, you know, really quickly, as soon as we found out that it was a girl, I feel like there was just a flood of pink that has come into my <laughs> come into the house. Like all of a sudden, like seriously, within like 25 minutes, there was a pink bunny. I don't even know where it came from. Like like stuff just comes out of nowhere. So very excited about it. Uh, I'll have my hands full because I'll have my wife and then a mini wife, you know, mini version of her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am I can't be more excited, though. And I know you uh, go down that path of daddom yourself. So uh, I- I'm super stoked. Yeah, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. And I- I'm so happy for you. And uh, so you have done a lot and a lot of people know you from your podcast, but you're not doing that anymore. You're doing some other stuff. Can you talk about sort of the journey you've had since you've started to where you're at now? Yeah, sure. So I'll give the, uh, Cliff's notes version of it for sure. So I started, uh, my business, the rise, the top in 2008 online. Um, and I believe Pat, that was similar time to when you started. I remember there was some kind of magical, it was like October, 2008. There's like a whole group of people that started around then somewhere yeah, around that, there. That's when I got laid off. And, and I don't know if that was the case for you, but 
Uh, no, actually, what I what I did was I was working in the inline hockey industry a couple of years before that. A really random story. Um, but be that as it may, really random. Uh, but I started, you know, I started, I came up with this idea to do a online show and podcast. Really how it started was all about entrepreneurship. Um, it was very broad. It was very early on. As you remember, I mean, this was 2008. The podcasting landscape and online shows was very different than it was now. Mm-hmm. Um, very different. And so f- really for five years, um, what I spent most of my time doing, or about four years uh, into five, um, was I would interview entrepreneurs all around the world. Um, you know, ranging from Tony Shea from Zappos to Seth Godin to, you know, this and that, Damon, John, anyone that I could get my sort of grubby hands on, um, I interviewed. And what happened was I, the the business model that I had at the time has evolved big time. And what I did early on was it was all about kind of sponsorships and trying to build the audience and figure out what to do. Um, And again, I had no experience. So everything I was doing was complete trial and error, complete trial and error. Mm -hmm. And where the big shift came in, and this I think is is pretty interesting, is that because I interviewed so many diverse people, you being one of them, right, Pat? Mm. There's all these different industries that I talked to people in, and not just industries, but just models of entrepreneurship, right? You kind of had like the tech people and the mom and pop people and the 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 startup people. And, you know, as I interviewed people, I started kind of realizing that I resonated the most with this sort of secret online world of, let's call them content creators and people that created their own products and programs and sold them online. Um, some people call them the expert industry. Um, I came up with a term called mediapreneur to describe those folks. That's cool. Um, and what was interesting, and I know, Pat, you'll resonate with this, and, and so will um, Smart Passive Income Nation over there, is that the lifestyle and the way that they describe their businesses was different than anything else. You know, you're talking to people that were working from anywhere. You were talking to people that kind of control their own destiny. They could be home with their kids or traveling around, whatever they wanted to do. They seem to have smaller teams. Their stress levels seem to be lower and they just seem genuinely happy and also making a lot of money and helping people. And I thought that was pretty darn cool. And this is where I started discovering these sort of online course creators, um, you know, ranging from the early days from, you know, the Marie Forleo's and Allie Brown's and, you know, Derek Halpern's and Ryan Lee's and people like that in this world. And I just became obsessed with it and and started interviewing just those types of people, um, soaking everything up like a sponge. And then I started launching my own products and programs several years ago. And that's really where the business took off. Yeah, I mean, we all definitely, anyone who was following you, and I was one of them, I mean, we definitely saw that shift. And you came out with some videos and were very honest about where you were going, and I appreciated that. Uh, I'm a little sad that your podcast isn't isn't live anymore because it was such a good podcast. I feel like you were one of the original people who started interviewing other entrepreneurs, you and Andrew Warner. And you, you in particular, were such a good interviewer. Like, it was one of my favorite shows to be on, and you ask the best questions, and you're always just friendly, and you make me feel comfortable, and I, you know, you could tell when guests come on your show that that's the case. I mean, just thank you for the inspiration for for how to run interviews. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, that was, that, that that's great to hear. And, you know, the, honestly, the reason I stopped doing the podcast, um, and my last episode was published right at the end of 2013, uh, 2013 was a, a couple of reasons. One, I was just kind of burnt out. I mean, just to be 100% honest, you know, Pat, mm-hmm. like after doing five years of shows, I just like kind of was going through the motions the last few months. And I don't want to be in a business where I'm just going through the motions, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and number two is where we've evolved now is, is just to kind of complete that story. And, and you know the story, but I launched my own program about doing interviews online. And that program took off. And then I became very obsessed with, you know, creating and selling digital products and programs and did that for year, a couple of years. And then the question started being, well, how do I create my own online course and sell it online? Yeah. And that's when our business really took off was that's now what our, what our entire focus is, is helping people create and sell their own online course. And what, what was interesting is as that business took off, that basically took up most of my business time. And I'm putting the business time in quotes, not like that weird song where business time is a metaphor for sexy time. (laughs) Um, But but we're talking, uh, uh, you know, in in the time that I was spending. And so, you know, I might bring back the podcast. I've thought about it. It might happen. I've teased at it before. Um, But I just want to make sure that we're kind of doing it 
for good reasons, you know? Right, right. So again, we're talking to David from the rise to the top.com. And if you go to that homepage, you'll see he's great pictures. And he says, I help people create and sell digital products and programs online. Very clear. And I think I need your help because, <laughs> you know, I've been doing this for quite a while and I just don't have my own online product yet. And there are so many which ways to go, so many different programs to use, so many types of courses I create. How, how does one get started? How do I get started trying to figure out what to do first or what course to create? Yeah, it's a g- great question, Pat. And, and let me tell you, I was like this several years ago, right? I had people coming up to me left and right and saying, David, you need to create your own products and programs. And I had written a book and I'd kind of done some other stuff and mm-hmm. I just hadn't got grasped around it. And, you know, my program didn't exist <laughs> that I had right now. Otherwise I would buy it, you know, <laughs> back in the day. Um, so I had to do it really by, by trial and error. So I think the first thing to think about, and th- this is key before we get into kind of topic and all that kind of jazz, um, is online courses is a great tool to use to generate revenue and help people, especially if you don't want to be on that type of treadmill. You know, um, you know, when there's a treadmill out there of membership sites and other things like that, and I'm not knocking membership sites or anything, but I'm just saying for my personality and, and maybe for yours too, Pat, I think it's great when you can create something once and sell it over and over again. Right. So this is actually different than a membership site because I think some people combine you yeah. know, online programs with membership sites. Can you sort of define what each of those are really quick for us? Yeah. So I think, you know, here's some of the key ways, obviously, you can generate, you know, revenue from something that you know, right? You've got the obvious ones that you just talked that that we're that are out there, like, you know, one on one coaching, group coaching, speaking, um, all those types of things fall into the category of what I would call dollars for hours. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just personally, I'm all about lifestyle. I don't necessarily love doing those dollars for hours things. Right. And a lot of my customers want to get out of that that race as well. Then you have the more leverage programs and those have subcategories. So here's some examples of some programs. Right. You would have uh, online events and summits. And we've done some of those. Pat, actually, you participated in one of those a few years ago. Yeah. Um, online events and summits, those types of things. You've got online courses and you've got membership sites would sort of be sort of the three kind of major categories of those. And then you also have smaller things like ebooks, stuff like that, right? right? But I'm talking about more on the premium side. And, you know, the difference, in my opinion, between an online course and like a membership site um, is that a membership site requires you to put up fresh content every single month. Maybe it's biweekly. It depends on how you set it up, right? Mm-hmm. And people come in and they can go out, uh, they pay a fee, and they can come in and go out and all that kind of jazz. And you have kind of an ongoing treadmill. Now, there's ways of getting around that and doing it where it's more automated and stuff like that. Um, but for me, what I love about online courses is that you can have a premium price on something because online courses sell for premium price when you position them correctly and you have authority behind them. We'll talk about that, I'm sure, more. Mm-hmm. Um, but you create it once and then you sell it. Um, it's that simple. And so, for example... With one of my on the cl- my main online course, you can pay in full, or you can pay with a twelve month payment plan, which is I know a massive payment plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a massive payment plan, but it's basically doing a membership site without the membership, meaning that there's no new content to create every month. It's just all up there for them. So there's a difference between kind of the methods. Um, and I have just found that online courses and e learning stuff like that is just something that's taken off and and will continue to grow in the future as well. Right. So. Perhaps just calling it a standalone product. Yeah, stand, a standalone product that, um, again, I think the big appeal is you, is, you, is it's kind of like, you know, if you are a type of person that just likes to hammer down, get something done, and then you get to focus on the marketing and the promoting and helping your customers and stuff like that, as opposed to kind of the ongoing content on top of whatever other type of content you're doing as well. Right. Now, a lot of people, I feel, if they have solutions to provide to their audience, they're going to immediately go to something like an ebook because it's a lot faster to create. It's it's just, you know, simple to think about and you sell it on your site or on Amazon even. Uh, but why should people think about doing an online course? What helps, like what what makes an online course that valuable and able to or allow you to charge premium prices for it? 
Yeah. So first of all, there's just a value associated with something that's multimedia versus an ebook. Um, meaning, so when you see an online course immediately on the kind of the value chain, people are like, oh, it's, it's, there's videos, there's downloads there's stuff like that. It's much more of a premium positioning than say an ebook, which could be easily given away or it's $2 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then this is what I love about online courses is you don't need a huge amount of buyers to be massively successful with it, right? So let me give you an example um, compared to eBooks, right? Let's say you do a $497 course and I actually have a cheat thing in front of me. So when I'm about to throw out this math, you're gonna think I'm a wizard and I'm not at all. <laughs> um, uh, trust me. Um, so if you get one buyer a day for a $497 course, one buyer a day, that's $181,405 a year, nice. okay? Mm -hmm. and, and that's just giving you a scope of, of just where it could be. You do half of that one every other day, right? You're, you're looking at about $90,000. Mm -hmm. And my point is, it's very hard to make that kind of money with an ebook. And I think also, and, and this is important too, that online courses set people up for success, meaning your customers, more than an ebook. Like I, I know ebooks are great. I consume ebooks all the time. I think they're fantastic. But if you really want to get help get people results, and that's what this is all about, is helping people get results, whatever that result might be, whether it's, you know, the losing the 10 pounds or how to build a teddy bear. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> that was random. I, I saw a teddy bear to my right and I was like- Yeah, you are definitely in father mode already. Yeah, I know, right? There's a little bear. I don't know what's going on over here. I've lost <laughs> my mind. Um, but- uh, uh, you know, there, there's, you're, you're in the results industry, right? At the end of the day, getting people results. And it's been proven that online courses are amazing ways to get people results by having a step-by-step -step system for them to follow. And I think that's also where the appeal is. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you said that. And a lot of people have said this to me because I give away most of my information away for free. And I want people to consume it and share it and things like that. But right. then I've had a few people, few people that we both know actually say, dude, you need a course and you're actually doing your audience a disservice by not creating a course and allowing them to more easily and sort of more, I don't, I don't I want to say professionally go through that content. Yeah. And, and I, I agree because here's the thing. Let, let's think about this way, Pat. Here's another great way of thinking about it is that, you know, have you ever been, have you ever or gotten something where it's free, maybe it arrived in the mail, maybe you saw it online, and you just kind of set it aside, right? Because it's free. Yeah. Oh, great. It's aside. You know, maybe it's valuable, maybe it's amazing, but it's free. Now think of something that has had a little bit of an impact in your wallet that you purchased, okay? okay. And there's that term, get your money's worth. Right. And you're doing your, your customers a service by doing that. You know, people always say, well, why do you charge premium prices, all these different things besides the revenue, which is amazing, and also getting better customers because you're getting these premium people. I mean, it's amazing stuff that you can do at premium prices. You're also kind of telling people, hey, listen, let's get, let's get the, the pedal to the metal here because they're thinking, oh my God, I've spent $1,000 on this, $2,000 on it, $500 on this. I'm going to get my money's worth and I'm going to show that Pat Flynn that I'm going to do his darn course and get it done. I'm going to get that result. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, actually, I'm thinking about one time when my buddy offered me a, a disc. It was a, it was a disc for P90X and he offered it to me for free. And I knew that if I were to take that, I probably wouldn't complete the 90 days of training. And this is sort of the at-home fitness training program. So I exactly. actually bought it on Amazon and I got it. And, you know, I completed the course. I completed the, the training because of that. Yeah, and that's where the transactional thing comes in here. There's a big difference again. And you, you create some of the, the best content out there online, on the internet, um, in, in this space and maybe anywhere. And there's just a lot of room here uh, for you to make a premium course uh, that would absolutely crush it and not only crush it for you, obviously, but also uh, your customers and people coming in that want to get that result, whatever it might be. Love it. Okay, so we know we want to do a course. Where do we start? Obviously, topic, there's perhaps every, every niche has a number of different things they could create a course for. Do you go a, a completely narrow solution? Do you go wide? How do you, how do you even begin to think about this? Yeah, great. And I got some definitely some steps to think about this for sure. Um, so here's something very important. Uh, the biggest mistake I see is people going too broad with their topic. Mm. Too broad with the topic, meaning they come up with something and it's just it's just uh, you know social, how to dominate on social media or something like that, right? And what I encourage people to do 
is you either have to get very specific by audience or by topic or by both. Okay. So let me give you an example. One of my most successful students, her name's Nikki Brown, Nikki Brown. Okay. And Nikki launched her first online course uh, this year using my program, did 60K on her first launch and now has done well over 100K um, on top of that. And this is one of the reasons it's successful is that here's what she did. Ready? Here's the, here's the, the breakdown. She started an online business, mm-hmm. then moved towards uh, um, like kind of uh, online marketing, and then realized her sweet spot was copywriting. And that's what her course is about. It's called A Course About Copy. It's just on copywriting. See how that gets specific? Yeah, that's that. That's very specific, actually. It reminds me of episode 128 with Manu Kalia, who is a uh, physical therapist, and he created an online course that was specifically for getting better knees. And it Perfect. was perfectly Perfect. niched even for runners. Even the copy on that particular page was just for runners. So, I mean, that's that's another great example because he did really well, too. And it actually helps, I would imagine, with – you know, you're targeting if you're if you're doing ads and, and yep. like your copy and things like that. No, you're, you're exactly right on. So so, for example, you can also go very specific on your audience, which I also encourage. So there's a guy named Christopher Stafford who has another successful course that we've done. And he he started with sort of service professionals, like mm-hmm. selling for service professionals. And he's gotten all the way down to selling for realtors realtors and oh, wow. lead generation, right? And that's why his was successful, did 30K on his first launch, right? And that's where I see one of the key things. You know, I've been talking with a friend of mine who's working on kind of rebranding a fitness course that he's, that he's doing, and he wants to do it specifically for guys over 40, right? Mm. And, and this again, exactly, because then once you have that demographic, then think about your marketing in the back of your head. Well, now it's easy to target on different things, exactly like you said. It's easy to target on ads, it's easy to target on, let's say, places you want to be interviewed online. Um, it's easy to target when you want to do guest blog posts and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Because you already know specifically where you want to go. But taking a step back from that, Pat, and I think this is one of the key things to think about, is I call this the pay attention principle. But really, the idea here is what are the most common questions that you're asked? And this is the challenge for you to think about and also your entire audience. What are the most common questions that you're asked all the time? You know, um, it, when you're on social media, uh, when you're at a conference, after you're speaking at a conference, um, are you, you know, when you're in the bathroom and someone comes up to you and gives you a hug and says, Pat Flynn, you're at the toilet. I'm going to give you a hug. You know, whatever <laughs> weird stuff happens. That's happened. Um, what are the most common questions that you're asked or emailed? Also, are there any how-to posts that you've done that went through the roof, through the roof in terms of like people like resonating with it, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Just to give a scope, this is how I came up with my first product, Create Awesome Interviews. As I started realizing, people were asking me all the time, well, David, how did you get interviews for your show? How did you market your show? How did you get an audience? How did you get a sponsorship? Like all these different questions all related to interviews. And that's really where Create Awesome Interviews came from, was that. Just simple questions coming from people. And what I would encourage you is to think about that, Pat. And then if you have an idea what it might be, that's a great time to survey your audience. And I have a one-question survey that you can send out. How about this one? One question. What is it? All you say is, what do you want to know more about blank? You don't tell people you're creating a course. I mean, you you could if you wanted to, but you say, you know, I get questions all the time about X. What do you want to know more about blank? And do you know why you asked that question, Pat? Tell me. The suspense builds. (laughs) <laughs> um, so, so here, here's the reason. Number one, you get instant feedback, right? Like you're going to get, and it's not about the size of your audience. I mean, you could get five replies and if those five people are pretty passionate, you're going to have an idea that you have a topic that's pretty cool. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's a couple things that are going to happen. And I know this cause not my first rodeo. Um, number one is that you get to pick up some of the language and terms used that might surprise you. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they're going to start writing your course for you here when they ask the questions. They're basically creating your modules for you. Number two, you'll be surprised, and this is just the case of, for everyone that's listening to this, if you send this out about your topic, 
you'll be surprised about how simplistic to you the questions are, even though they're not that simplistic. Mm -hmm. They're going to sound simplistic. Like I remember I was like, what do you mean you don't know how to get Pat Flynn on an interview? You kidding me? Everyone knows how to do that, right? Yeah, send them a rap Uh, video. That's right. right. Everyone knows how to do that. So you're going to start to pick up the terminology um, and the different things that uh, people use. And that's a great standpoint to start to kick off the idea for your course. Nice, nice. So after you get those ideas, you get some information from your audience. I think survey is uh, uh, an obvious thing to do. Um, and there's different tools for managing that, right? Would you say Survey Monkey, or would it just a one-liner email be okay? Yeah, I, I well, what I would prefer is something where someone has to like fill out an actual thing, you know, uh-huh. and uh, enter their name and email. Okay. Um, and so I, yeah, Survey Monkey is perfect. Wufu is another one. W u f o o, another survey tool. But I, what's cool is. If I look back at that survey, that very first survey I did, the people that answered that survey had the highest conversion rate. Not surprising, right? No, not at all, actually. It's because you're <laughs> going to get those, you're going to get the most passionate people. So make sure they enter their name and email. So even if you put it up on social media or something like that, you're going to still have like a little list of kind of pre buyers here, if you will, or, you know, uh, a very hot list of people, which I think is important as well. Right. Now, at this point, I know a lot of people, they focus on validation of this idea, you know, really making sure that this is something that will be sellable before they actually even create it sometimes. Is that something you recommend doing? How do you, you know, what are your next steps after you get these survey answers back? Right. I do and I don't. So how do I, how do I tightrope walk this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, There's two ways to look at this. First of all, if you obsess all day over validation or or not all day, I mean, for the next six months, you're going to be in trouble, right? Um, It can be something that can be done very quickly. Uh, money loves speed, you know? Yeah. And so what I would recommend doing, and this can happen before or after your survey, you know, I maybe even before, if you kind of have this topic idea, right? Mm-hmm. Go out there and find other courses on that topic. And, and I'm telling you right now, if you can't find any, start looking for other types of products and programs that are on that topic, Right. Um, you know, is there, is there eBooks people are buying? Is there other stuff that's out there? Are there associations that people pay to be a part of? Um, is there other things out there where people, where there's a, the key is people spending money on this topic or not. And if they're not, you don't want to waste your time trying to create an industry from thin air. Right. Were there people who were, you know, creating products about interviews before you created yours? So, and and then the key is there's many ways to stick out and we can talk about that for sure. But here's the key. So I went in there and I said, well, what's out there on interviews? And then I even, you might even have to go a step broader than your topic. So I was like, okay, I want to know what's out there about interviews and what's out there about creating web shows, right? Mm -hmm. And podcasts. And realize this was like 2000, this was years ago before there was a million products on this, right? Um, So first of all, I noticed that Andrew Warner had something, but it was just like a small kind of $97 one hour thing or something on um, interviewing, Mm -hmm. right? I saw several other people had some how to start a show type stuff. And what I realized with that, and this is an important thing to think about, is that you can always go more specific as long as there's a market for it, right? So I knew that there was people um, buying products on how to create, let's say, an online TV show. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I figured, okay, well, I can go even more specific and talk about basically how to do an online interview show from that. Right. There's always ways that you can you can associate with it. But if no one was spending money on how to create a show or do interviews online, that would to me would be a massive red flag. And it's just like going into a bookstore. If you go to a bookstore, is there one cookbook or like 10,000 of them? Right. Mm -hmm. So don't be scared if you see that there's other products and programs out there on your, on your topic, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a fantastic thing. I, I like that. That's, you should be kissing and hugging those people that are doing it because at the end of the day, you're going to bring your own unique teaching style, your own ways of sticking out your own stories, and you're going to resonate with your audience, um, more than anyone else would, which is why it's going to work. And that's such a critical thing. I hate when people are like, why well, I, I went out there and I saw it. There's already, there's already courses on snowboarding. Well, not done by you. So, you know, yeah. let's get going on that. Yeah. And thank you for mentioning that because that's something even I've personally struggled with. And I know a lot of people who are, you know, out there and they're doing the research and they see these other courses, other people who are doing the same things from, you know, e- even before they even start blogging, they're like, oh, there's a blog about that already. And there's an online course about that yep. already. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. Yes, that actually is good because there's a market for it. And, you know, 
like how did the segue do when they tried to reinvent walking right like right, right. The, i only see them on the boardwalk in san diego like in little tour groups right did the guy who started segway die on a segue i'm pretty I sure I've heard that yeah. i think have, we're gonna quote that as unofficial facts today here on the smart passive income <laughs> podcast no but i mean it's true i mean don't be afraid if those products already exist because you're not gonna copy them and create the same product you were just getting kind of inspired and validation from those products that's right that's right Okay, now we have a product idea. It's validated, perhaps. You know, there's other courses out there. We even maybe talk to a few of our audience members specifically about what we want to do, and they're getting excited about it. Okay, where do we go from there? There's a bunch of ideas in my head on what to put in this particular product. How do I organize that, and how do I best share it on a platform? Right. This is the moment where you panic. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's, this is no, 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 no panic at all. There's, there's, oh, and by the way, another uh, kind of pro tip here, Pat, is that someone like you, and also I'm sure there's a lot of uh, mini Pats in your audience as well that have maybe a wide variety of topics and things they could do, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day for your first course, you got to choose one. You got to choose one. You know what I mean? I've seen people try to launch three courses at once, work on four at the same time, work on two at the same time. You know what? Later on, you might move into another topic, but you got to laser focus on one. That is that is a huge tip for sure. Thank you for that. I need that. Uh, <laughs> laser cut. And at the end of the day, and by the way, this is another one before I even go go through all exactly the question you and you asked, but is you got to also realize with someone like yourself, Pat, and also the mini Pats that are out there that- your topic is not going to be for 100% of your audience. So don't worry about that. Yeah, no, that's there's really no important. topic you're going to come up with that is going to be 100% of your audience, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so you can't worry about that either. Some people are going to like it. It's not going to be for others and it's totally fine, right? Okay. F- Follow up question based on that. What if I am just starting out and I don't have, I hardly have any audience at all. Can yeah, I still so, do, a, can I still do a course and be successful with it? Well, step one, build your button audience, my friend. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, you know, and, and, the key here is that you got to kind of put a flag in the sand. And we've had people that have started with a list of, you know, zero people and have built it up. Um, you know, I don't specifically teach list building per se, but we've had people with anywhere from 400 to 1,000 people on an email list launch successful courses. Um, we had one last week, actually, that was one of our highest uh, first launches ever. They started their business this summer. Um, you know, now, and then they, they built their list to about 1300 people that are interested in online brand building. Mm -hmm. Um, great with design launched a course last week, I think did 62 K in sales. Wow. 62 K in sales. So it's not necessarily the size, even though that does matter, you know, wink, wink. Um, (laughs) it's about, it's about the, the quality of the audience that you bring in. So yes, you want, you can get started from scratch, but here's a big tip for getting started from scratch, Pat, um, is when you're starting a platform is you have to invest in quality design. Yeah. And I know that sounds like what, where did that come from? But you know, when you're starting out and people come to your site and you're, you're putting your flag in the sand is that you are the skateboarding expert, right? And you're Mr. Tricks or Mrs. Tricks of skateboarding it's got to look good. Even if you're just getting started and this is your first website and you're just getting started yesterday, um, investing that design and looking like a pro is going to put you light years ahead of the other people that are throwing up this sort of crap template, if Mm -hmm. you will, when Mm -hmm. you get going. So um, yes, you do want to start with with obviously list building. Um, I think people to create an online course, um, if I were to rank them in who's best positioned to do it, because I'm not going to get out here and BS and say everyone sh- should be doing this because it's not true, right? Mm-hmm. Um, is one, uh, and this isn't necessarily an order, but one and one A are either someone that is making money now dollars for hours in some form or fashion with their expertise. So one-on-one coaching, group coaching, something else, and they want to productize that knowledge. That's obviously someone that's well positioned to create a course, right? Mm-hmm. Number two is co- content creators online. You've got a podcast, you've got a blog, you've got a, you know, funny cat drawings. I don't, I don't know what it is, but whatever you're doing online and you've built some kind of audience, it might be 500 people, but you've built some kind of audience. It doesn't matter if you haven't sold to them anything ever. You're still extremely well positioned to create a course. If you've got people that know, like, and trust you, even if it's 27 people, 
right? Mm -hmm. And then the third type is kind of the starting from scratch. And and that's where you need to really be strategic and really focus on your list building. Um, And if you know what your topic is, you're going to have a head start on the rest of us and not just build a random list, if you will. So so important distinctions there for sure. Awesome. Thanks, David. And before we get to that answer that sort of everybody's been waiting for after I asked that question this uh, you know these these things keep coming up and this is a mental one again and something that I, even I've struggled with in the past as well that I think we should definitely cover uh, at least just for a minute here is okay I've been pumping content out I've been building a relationship with my audience everything's been free so far uh, and then I'm gonna start selling something I'm, I'm, I'm worried I'm gonna get backlash I mean I I've I've sold a product already I've so so I'm kind of over that hump of you know I've ripped the band-aid off in terms of that on, on my site personally but I know there's a lot of people out there who are afraid to start selling after they've given things away for free for so long great question great question and it's definitely one of those kind of key uh, you know myths um, of, of what happens with online courses now first of all let's talk about this will you get probably some backlash probably yes, yes. Yeah, you probably will. And guess what? You just got to deal with it. You know, it's one of those cases because at the end of the day, I'm not going to let a couple rotten apples uh, that are in there that are, let's just be honest, like they're either free loady or a little douchey, um, be the types of people that are not going to allow me to help a bunch of people by selling a product, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, this is what I think you have to get, get kind of over, right? Is get your selfish motives out of your head and think to yourself, oh my God, I am going to be helping people with this product and program, right? If you don't believe in it, you're going to crumble when the backlash comes, if, if the backlash comes, right? right? right. And, and, and the thing is, you just have to remember, you are helping people, and yes, you're going to make money from it, and that's a good thing. That is an amazing thing, right? And so, you know, and I got to be honest too, a lot of times, that thought process of I'm going to get a bunch of backlash is actually way overblown than what actually happens. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we always think like uh, 10,000 people are going to come out of the woodworks with pitchforks and have uh, protests, you know, and I say that right now because I'm in St. Louis where I live, where we're in the midst of protests here <laughs> right yeah, now yeah, yeah. over a bunch of stuff. And, and uh, you know, they're worried that the helicopters are going to be going and there's going to be flags out waving that Pat Flynn wants money, Right. And it's just not the reality of it. You might get one or two comments, you delete them, you move on with your day, um, and it should not affect you when it comes down to it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny how the math in terms of comments and responses are is whacked out where, you know, one negative comment trumps, you know, a thousand positive comments. That's, that's absolutely true. And you just got to, it's one of those things like we're all human. You're going to see it and you're not going to like it. You know, if I see it, I still don't like it right nowadays, yeah, yeah. but it's, you learn to deal with it and you learn to realize that this is a, this is someone that's not your peep. Um, and you got to realize when you put your flag out that you're going to be selling products and programs, your audience might adjust over time. I know mine has as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you're kind of saying, Hey, this is kind of where we're going to go for now. And I'm not saying that, you know, it has to be the topic of your program for the rest of your life, but there's going to be some people that maybe fall off and you have to be totally cool with that because you're also going to be bringing in more people that are like, oh my God, this is totally what I'm coming here for. Love it. Okay. Now let's shift from mindset to technically how to put all this together. Yep. Kind of going back to that original question. We have this product idea. Where do we start? How do we get this information in our heads and our expertise onto a platform to best serve people? Right. So, so kind of two, three, and four, when it comes to it, if step one was coming up with your topic, right? Right. Two, three, and four, and I'll, I'll, breeze through two and three, and then we'll get to four, which is really what you're asking about. Um, but you kind of got to go in order is you want to name your course, you want to price your course, and then you want to record your course. Okay. Name, price, record. Name, price, record, baby. Just like that. MPO. And by the way, on a, on a note on this, I love doing this stuff up front. Now you are welcome to go out and, and do it live, right? Like, you know, you could sell and say, Hey, we're going to do a six module course. And the next, the first um, module is going to be next week, right? And you could do it live. Mm-hmm. I actually am not a fan of that. Interesting. Um, um, I'm not saying you can't do it. I've had customers do it um, and they've had success with it. But here's the thing. I would much rather have people record it all beforehand and get it up. Because here's why. You're going to be out there busting your butt marketing and promoting this and creating marketing funnels and all the good stuff that uh, has the right people buy. And if you're also worried about the PowerPoint for next week and you got to go on live and do the things, it's going to be a lot of overwhelm. 
This is true. I mean, I've done this in the past, even when I started with the niche site duel back in 2010, I did a sort of online coaching thing that was going to turn into a membership site or a course. And I took six weeks or maybe it was longer than that. But anyway, every week we met on a webinar and essentially I was creating the course as I was going, getting yep. feedback with from people who were there, what's missing, you know, giving homework and things like that. I thought that was the perfect solution, but it was completely overwhelming to think about, okay, how am I going to help this sort of beta group of, te- uh, of users or students and also create a product at the end of this? Right. And also, and I'm not, again, I, this is just like an opinion thing and I've had customers do both, right? Because at the end of the day, you can choose which way you want to go, right? Mm-hmm. I can just offer kind of what my experience has been. And I've seen people that have done it well, do it live and they just kind of package up, then they have the recordings that they can sell, right? right. Um, but the other challenge of that too is that there's some people, and by some people, I mean a lot of people out there, they kind of want it all. Yeah. They want it all. They want to go at their own pace. They want to devour. They want to like rock out like six modules in a night because they're like hyped up on coffee and God <laughs> knows what, right? Or or you've got some people that want to go through the pace thing on a weekly basis. And the thing is, if you give it all to them, honestly, um, they can kind of choose their own path, okay. uh, which so, way they want to go. So you don't, you don't recommend, and I've seen courses do this in the past where you sign in, you know, you pay and you get your login information and then it's like module one comes out week one. Yeah. Even though it's already there, you're sort of drip feeding. Yeah. I, you know, my, again, I'm going on my experience and my opinion from, from three ways. One, my own consumption of products. Number two, creating them and watching my students. And number three, hearing from my students, right. Mm -hmm. About their products and programs. So I've kind of got like the trifecta of everything covered here. Right. Um, I, I really do believe we're shifting towards the more on-demand, binge-watching, Netflix-like model where you give it all to them. Yeah, no, that's, that's a perfect way to put it. I mean, I watch, you know, the whole season of Orange is the New Black in like a day. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think what, well, I'll just give you a scope. Um, you know, I've got, a, well, uh, Amy Porterfield, you know Amy. Yeah. Pat, right? And we've had many discussions about this. Amy and I are in a a very high level mastermind group that we do together. It's like six or seven of us that we get together once a quarter. And um, we got to sneak you into one of those, by the way. Um, But uh, we were talking about this. She's got her main product called FB Profit Lab, right? Mm -hmm. And she launched it twice this year. And the first time she launched it, it was a drip, right? So here's module one this week, next week, module two, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then decided this time on her uh, most recent launch of it, after our discussions to give it all to people at once. And it definitely worked better. That's awesome. That's good to hear. And actually we're going to have Amy come on the show. I'm actually interviewing her tomorrow and uh, we're going to be talking about her sort of three video launch sequence, which she uh, did really well with. Cause you know, I have you talking about the, uh, you know, how to create the course and what it's going to be like. And then we're going to have her kind of help put it all together with the marketing and launch. I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn that she learned that launch sequence from me, but uh, (laughs) I'll Uh, ask her about that tomorrow. Yeah, That's part of my, that's part of the VIP launch strategy is the three, the videos and stuff that we went over. Okay. She just made him prettier than everyone else and made him awesome. So that's why Amy rocks. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of my, my thought process on that. And again, you're welcome to um, go and do your own experiments. Uh, but a, a couple things. So one, uh, very, very briefly on the name of your course. Yeah. Um, end of the day, the name does not matter. It does not matter. It, it matters very, very little compared to the hook. And the hook is the promise of what your course does for people or what you're going to be teaching them, right? right? So a hook is something like the step-by-step system to do blank or the blueprint, Pat's blueprint to blank, right? Mm-hmm. The promise of what it, what it is and who it's for is the hook. Kind of what they're going to get out of it. Exactly. So for example, mine, Create Awesome Online Courses, is, this, is the proven step-by-step system to create, promote, and profit from your own online course. Nice. Right? Nice. Simple. Nice. Um, and, and we've had that across the, across the board. So the hook is what matters. It's kind of your little spicy, um, nugget that you give people there. Uh, the only thing that really matters with the name is you want to make sure that the URL, the .com is available because I'm a big believer that when you're creating premium courses, you want to have it on its own .com. Thank you. I was about to ask about that because a lot of people have their own courses, but it's sort of, you know, the home URL slash, and then the name of the course, you, you you prefer it to be on its own site. Why, why, why is that? Few, few reasons. Number one, branding. Okay. Cause each course is almost like a little sub brand of you, cool. right? That you do. Okay. Um, number two, 
is ease of repeating things like when you're in an interview on social media, anything like that. Like, you know, I don't want to be like, hey, Pat, um, if you want to check out my course now, go to the risetop.com slash files slash blog slash courses slash create awesome online courses slash monkey slash Pat Flynn, slash right? Spicy nuggets. Slash spicy nuggets, you know, double slash. Instead, it's like, hey, create awesome online courses.com. Cool. Right? Cool. It, it, you know, it's just for a simplicity standpoint when it comes for naming. Okay. Okay. Um, the next thing is pricing. Uh, really fast on pricing. This is so important. And this is something I learned. And thank God I learned it by accident. Um, I was going to originally price my course way too low. My first course. Way too low. I was thinking I was going to do like $97 or something like that. And I had two conversations with two people that changed the game for me. And I want to share a quick nugget from that, if that's cool, Pat. Please. Um, I spoke with Marie Forleo and I spoke with Ryan Lee. Okay. And they gave two very good perspectives. Ryan was saying that the same effort is required to promote and be successful with a low end versus high end pricing. And I was like, huh, that's super interesting. And I found that to be very true. So, from, so many, a, from, from a marketing perspective, whether it's a $97 product or $497 product, you're going to put same, in the same amount of effort. Yep. Same amount of effort. So why not go for the gusto there? Right. Okay. Okay. The other tips that came in here, and this this was Marie's, was repeating what I said before, was that you're doing people a disservice by pricing too low, just like you're doing people potentially a disservice by having it free. See, Where, see I imagine some, some people in my audience right now saying, that's a bunch of baloney. Like, you're just kind of making an excuse to charge more. No, I, I, I strongly believe it, because I'm telling you right now, if you look at something that's two courses next to each other, let's just say the courses are on how to publish on an Amazon ebook. Okay? okay. Just okay. made that up or whatever. And there's the $97 course and there's the $997 course. Okay. That are sitting right there. I'm telling you right now that there's people that are getting more value without, let's just say all things being equal from the 997 course. And the reason for that is that exactly thing about hitting, hitting people where if you really care about the results of your customers, you got to make sure that you're weeding out all the crappy people. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I, it does. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, we could call it fluffy or whatever, but I, I mean, you know, then go ahead and bust your butt and make a nine dollar course and see how it goes. Because I'm telling you right now, higher price courses bring in more premium and more awesome people. It's just a fact, and you're going to get rid of the bottom feeders by right, doing that. Right. And people are more you, likely to take action too. That's ab- absolutely correct. So for example, you know, and I've talked with a lot of people that have, um, you know, products and programs in a variety of price ranges. It's the 90, 10 rule. 90% of the problems, complaints, issues, lack of results come from the bottom percentage, uh, the lowest cost item. Now here's a counter to that, but I want to help as many people as possible. Well then, you know, go start a charity. (laughs) <laughs> go start a go go start a nonprofit. Do you know what I mean? Because some people, I'm I, I sh- I'm sure when you price that high, and we're just spitballing here. I'm not, uh, you know, totally. we. Some people can be like, "Wow, that that's way out of my price range." I'd love to take this course, but you know, I can't yeah, I can't it, afford it, it. it. Listen, I've had someone offer me nineteen dollars in a book for my one thousand dollar course. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you get you're gonna get people that are gonna come in and just say, "I can't afford it." I, 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 you know, you're going to hear every sob story under the sun. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, it's just a reality of it. I might sound like kind of harsh when I'm saying this, but mm-hmm. I, I, I don't mean to be, but like <laughs> the, the, the funny thing is, you, but you have to stick with your laurels about what you're doing and, and who you're helping. And you say, well, you hope you can come back and, you know, at some point and, you know, we don't compromise on anything, you know, ever. Yeah. And, and my, I tell my students to do the same because at the end of the day, this is the difference between like a Saks versus Walmart. It's an old analogy but it's very true. And if you want the discerning customers, you have to be in that price and brand range of doing that. And that's why I encourage my students and people learning from me to to price themselves in the top 10% of their market. The top 10% of their market. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've talked about pricing before with Ramit and we'll put links to that, those interviews because we've we've talked specifically about pricing strategies and he even talked about how when he sold his first product, he sold it for like, $4.95. Four dollars and ninety five cents. Yes, I, I, yes, yeah, something like that. His guide and and uh, now his his courses are much higher, but he's doing much better and he's he's helping a lot of people too. Right. And by the way, um, back to my harsh statement before about starting a charity or nonprofit. Right, it, is that you can also point to people that can't afford it right now to free content. 
Yeah, that's what you I know, do. You know what I'm saying? And like, and, and you know, part of this is remember you mentioned that free video series, but with that Amy, you're going to talk about that, and I'll let her talk about all that kind of good stuff. But we have a free video series. We've got free cheat sheets. We've got free this. We free that. You point people to that, and you say, "Hey, here's some great content to help you." So it's not really like you're just like telling them, like you know, go screw yourself. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's not. I would not encourage doing that. But like at the end of the day, you're going to say, "Hey, here's my great free stuff." But if you want to take your game to the next level and you're ready for it, here's my premium stuff. And if they don't want that or they're not ready for it, they're not the right customer. Yeah, and pointing people to those free videos is great. Actually, Michael Port just did a launch for his uh, public yep. speaking course, and I'm going to be taking yep. that. Cool. Th- those videos leading up to that launch were amazing. Like I would have paid money just for those. And uh, then you know now I'm in his course. But you know I, I think Amy said in, on her, one of her latest podcasts about the uh, video series is, is she wants people to, no matter if they buy her course or not, to come away with something amazing from those videos. Leading right. Cause you're launch. actually, you're actually teaching stuff in the videos and that's, that's what's critical. So, it, but it's a great point and, and it's, it's a good question and it's a shift in mindset. Um, and as you get into this, you're going to start realizing that it is very true that you're going to get the discerning customer and you're going to have some people that maybe aren't a great fit and that's okay as well. Right. Um, okay. but, uh, back to kind of what we're talking to in terms of recording the course and getting it up, um, you know, there's a lot of different options here and there's a big myth here that the technology is going to be insanely difficult and confusing, right? And as an entrepreneur that is doing this, it really comes down to um, getting in the trenches and learning how to do it, you know, doing support, um, you know, contacting these companies that I'll mention a few of them in a, in a minute um, and getting in there. No one comes out of the womb, like understanding how to work, go to webinar, <laughs> Do they? Right. Pat, I don't know. Is, is your daughter going to know when she comes out? The daughter. I mean, my daughter is going to obviously be a superhero. Yeah. So, you know, she's going to be different, right? But <laughs> not, no, but, you know, we don't know. You know, you don't come out like figuring out how to do Skype. So, you know, your option one is that you get in the trenches and learn it. Whenever I see something that's going to be valuable for my business, I want to get in there and learn how to do it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Number two is you outsource it. You outsource it. Um, you know, to that techie cousin Ray Ray or whatever, but Ray Ray. Um, or, or or whoever it might be, you know, that you can hire. Yeah, um, Ray Ray. I don't know how to code anything, right? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you know how to code? I feel like you know how to code. I, I know how to code a little bit because when I started my blog, I was in the trenches and actually I tried to learn CSS and HTML because I didn't trust anybody else with my stuff. And, right. and now I'm sort right. of trying to outsource as much as I can. So, yeah, but let's just put it this way. Having technical prowess uh, has very little to do with a success of an online course. Because let me give you a scope. I mentioned that mastermind I'm in with Amy and a few other people, right? I mean, these are all people that are making, at the very least, almost seven figures. Most people making seven figures or more in their mm-hmm. business in this group. Mm-hmm. And it takes us like 30 minutes to figure out the Wi-Fi when we get together, you know? <laughs> Like people like sitting around, I don't know, is it a capital A? I don't, you know what I mean? Like it's it, like if people were videotaping, they'd be like, seriously, you know, seriously. I want to see a, a video next time. So when it comes to recording your course and getting it up, you know, I always offer like kind of a set of tools and resources and I'm always testing new stuff as it comes out. Um, but really to record your course, um, it comes down to a microphone, a computer. And then if you want to do PowerPoint or Keynote, if it's something like that, or recording videos, if you're teaching something very visual, i.e. like tennis or something, right, right. you know, you might want to be on camera showing people how to hit the ball versus like, you know, a PowerPoint, which is probably not going to work for that. Right. Um, and if so, you're going to use PowerPoint or, you know, Keynote and just kind of record that, you can use a tool like ScreenFlow it's exactly or Camtasia. Right. And with a camera, I mean, there's a bunch of different cameras and we don't have to get into the, you know, technical sort of which ones are best, but, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be super fancy, right? No, not at all. I mean, you know, and I think, you know, I think if you're going to be on video really teaching something and and doing a premium course, um, it's probably worth investing at least a little bit to, you know, to be in quality HD. Mm -hmm. But as we know, camera prices continue to go down. It might even be worth getting a little bit of a camera crew to do that if you're going to be actually on camera. But I'm telling you right now, Pat, for my courses, you know, and we're talking courses that have generated now millions in in, in revenue, Mm -hmm. right? Is that, you know, it's literally me sitting right here right now, <laughs> just like this on this microphone that I'm talking to you on um, with my computer on in, in Keynote with ScreenFlow simply recording my screen. And that's it. That's awesome. Right. And then you can always offer other goodies in your course. Right. So, for example, you can offer maybe if you want to show people how to do something, you can create a screencast on your computer. So let's say I want to show people how to use an email autoresponder. I want to show people how to create an ad on Facebook. I could just obviously um, 
not use PowerPoint, I could be on there and just record my screen. That's another thing that you can do is screencasts, yeah. which is another great uh, tool for your course. And then what I always recommend is having um, a great way to think about this, Pat, is that your job as a course creator is to get people to their result as quickly and safely as possible, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. As quickly and safely as possible. Like you're the shortcut uh, to doing this, right? You're the shortcut. So what are some things that could be shortcut E? Uh, that you can put in your course. Maybe you've got some cheat sheets you can create or some maps or equipment guide or anything that helps take time away from people because that's really what they're paying you for, right? Is to learn how to do it and do it quickly Right. Um, are great things to include in your course. Now, here's a big myth, Pat, and this is important, is that just because you're charging higher prices doesn't mean you need to put in more content in your course. Hmm. This is something to think about. People think that if they charge higher prices, that means they have to throw in everything in the kitchen sink and the history of mankind into their course to justify the value of the price. Right, which could and sort of defeat the purpose of the shortcut exactly, part of it. Because now you've gone the long cut, right? Yeah. Which is just the way. Um, <laughs> and so the problem with that is that you end up in a situation, you're exactly right, where now people are like, oh my God, are you serious? Like, 196 modules and 300 (laughs) downloads. That's never going to happen, right? You want to have people that sit there and say, okay, I can do this. Not like, oh my God, it's going to take the rest of my life to do this, right? Right. And that's why when it comes to the amount of modules and things like that, um, I don't believe you really want to go over 12. 12 modules. With your course. You don't want to go over 12. And if you could do it in eight, do it in eight. If you can do it in six, do it in six. Um, At the end of the day, Once you start getting over 12, even if they're shorter, it starts to kind of creep into people's minds. I don't know if I can do this. I don't think I'm going to buy it. So modules being sort of like chapters, right? And within those chapters, there's lessons. Yeah, you break it down. You know, I mean, this is the best way to look at it is, uh, you know, I get it. You can get out a piece of paper if you want to. And what I like to do is get out a piece of paper or, you know, open a Word document and say, where's the person at right now? Where do you want to get them to at the end of it? And what is the steps that are going to take them to get there? Right. And you literally write out the steps, right? So like for me, it might be, you know, pay attention in a survey, naming your course, pricing your course, recording your course, generating opt-ins and potential buyers for your course, doing a VIP launch of your course, over delivering your course, and then ongoing sales and support, right? That might Mm -hmm. be the steps, and it's not a might. Those are actually the steps. Right. <laughs> but, but I'm saying that, that, you know, lay that out. So like, for example, if I was teaching, go, you know, how to drive longer in golf, it might just be, you know, step one might be club selection. Step two might be grip. Step three might be, you know, pro- but I don't play golf that way. So it's going to go downhill really quick. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, step three is, uh, you know, how to put the T in properly. I don't know, whatever, you know, and and all the way down to, you get to that point where you're hitting the longer drive, right? Right. So breaking that down into the amount of steps, um, you know, and, and feel free to go crazy with it at first, if you want to, I mean, write down as many as you want to, and then you want to condense that down into basically modules of your course, which is a great way of organizing it. Got it. Okay. So we're creating videos. They're short and sweet, you know, lots of modules, not too many, obviously, but then some lessons within those modules, again, to help people with that shortcut to get to that goal that you want them to get to, uh, videos hosted where? Yeah. So, and by the way, a length of videos people ask all the time too, um, doesn't really matter. Uh, I've seen courses that have 10 minute videos. I've seen courses that have 45, one hour videos at the end. I mean, not 45, one hours. I mean, 45 minutes to an hour oh, okay. um, is that you that the length doesn't matter because that's very topical. You know what I'm saying? It de- really depends on your topic. Just make sure. Keep in the back of your mind. Am I am I doing this as quickly and safely as I can or am I just adding in a bunch of filler? Right. And if your answer is I am doing this as quick as possible, well, then that's the best length for your video. Right. Okay, got it. Um, OK, so I prefer to host with Wistia. I just like Wistia. I, I love Wistia too. Yeah. I, I mean, that's where I like to put it up. Um, I, think, I mean, I think a question based on that is why not YouTube? You definitely don't want to do YouTube for sure um, because this is going to be a private paid content behind a paywall. And so you really don't want to, even if you put it unlisted and private on YouTube, um, not only that, you're kind of losing, I think it kind of cheapens the brand a little bit Yeah. yeah um, when exactly. it's on YouTube and it doesn't look like a premium course. It looks like you just put something on YouTube. Um, 
and also, you know, just kind of lack of control because um, it's on, you know, YouTube versus your own account on something. Right, right. right. Plus Wistia, um, I, I, I love Wistia. Not only are they a great company and they're always, you know, forward thinking, but the analytics that go along with it mm-hmm. are so important. You know, I've had a course in the past that used Wistia to host and just to see where people drop off in the videos and what I could do to improve them. And so, oh, yeah. you know, you can even get it to a point where you can then show your audience in that membership site, this is sort of advanced, but sort of have them understand what videos are left to watch or what, which ones they've seen right. already. Right. You can, you can geek out for days with all my analytics on Wistia, which I love. And what you could also do too, and this is totally up to you, but if you want to have um, downloads, excuse me, of your course, you know, maybe you want to allow people to download the video or MP3s or stuff like that. Um, I use Amazon S3 for that. Okay. Which is just a, you know, it's super, very inexpensive. You pay per download, like when someone downloads it, um, based on the file size. Like, I think my bills are like $3. A All right, month it's like, like point zero 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 one. Yeah, like I think my big like bill that. was $3. And I was like, <gasps> $3. Yeah. No. Um, and so anyway, so yeah, that's what I would recommend for video hosting. Okay, sweet. And then, okay, we have these videos. We have our content. We want to share. We have, you know, the, we, we want to have people download it. Perhaps we have worksheets and other things that go along with those different lessons. How do we get that up on our site? You know, we have our own URL yep. for this domain or for the, for this, for this uh, product or course. Uh, there's a ton of different kinds of sites out there that can help you deliver this content in a, in a fashion that's easy for your audience to go through it. What, what do you recommend? What are the tools out there that you use? Yeah. So I'll share what I do and, and just kind of in this landscape, by the way, is changing a lot lately, which is great because it's getting easier and easier and anything that gets easier and easier is great for us. Yes. Um, and so first of all, let's break it down. There's two options really at the end of the day in terms of categories. Category one is you host it right? Which I'll explain what that means in a second, meaning that you're going to get a little site created for you um, with WordPress most likely. And I'll talk about that in a second, or you create it yourself with WordPress and your, your costs are essentially the upfront fee to get that created. Mm -hmm. And then that's really it. Jen, that's just maybe a little bit of hosting fees. That's about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you host it with someone else that offers a coast uh, course hosting service where you're paying a monthly fee that could range from a couple hundred dollars on up, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you got like, you got the, host, you you create it and put it up, Not doesn't have to literally be you, um, or you host it with someone else, right? Okay. Okay. All my courses right now are self-hosted. So that means it's on WordPress. And what I did is, and in, in actually in my course, I've got recommendations for people to, um, they have access to my developer, um, I've got another guy and that's creating courses. Like he's like a course machine for people, that's um, cool. that just like, you know, for like a thousand bucks, a little bit more than that, he can, he creates you a custom course theme on WordPress with all your plugins and all that kind of good stuff. And then that's where your course will live Sweet. on there. That's awesome. So I love, I love doing custom ones on WordPress. Now there's other systems out there. Uh, there's Kajabi is coming out with a new thing that I'm kind of excited about. I'll be testing that soon. Um, and some of the other self-hosting course options, I encourage you to go to explore if you want to. Um, but that being said, most courses, all my courses and a lot of my students' courses are on WordPress with their own little theme that's created for them to do the course. Now, is that using a plugin like Wishlist to deliver them? Because right. I know Kajabi, Wishlist, there's WP Courseware, Member Mouse. Uh, there's a ton of them. Right. So here's what you do, right? Yeah, great question, Pat. So you get on your course. What what does a course site really need, right? So first of all, obviously it needs your course on there, <laughs> right, right. right? So you need, to, you need to upload your videos, have your modules, have your downloads, if you've got a link to support, um, anything like that. And then there needs to be a gateway where you have to log in with a username and password um, that you purchased it. And, you know, then the system recognizes you. So a couple of ways to do that. Wishlist member is kind of the gold standard for doing that with, with WordPress. Mm-hmm. Um, wishlist member. Um, now I am in a slightly tricky spot because I use Entreport slash Office Autopilot uh, right. for my email marketing and stuff, and my my um, my uh, uh, payment everything is handled through them basically. Mm-hmm. So they have their own little WordPress plugin called Pilot Press. Uh, I see. Okay, which is essentially wish list. I see. So it's right. similar to like Infusionsoft, which is a CRM email management system, but they even have their own uh, sort of course software that goes along with that. That's exactly right. So like one of my, exactly. So like you, you plug that in and it goes together. Um, but that's really all you need. And, and none of this stuff is, 
I mean, it could be outsourced for pennies on the dollar too, if you don't want to do it yourself. But yeah, essentially you just need a place to put the course, a place to protect it, um, you know, with a username and password and then have that username and password, um, system integrate with your autoresponder and you're off to the races. I know it's, it might sign a little tricky. It really, at the end of the day, isn't awesome. And then our course is up and then we can start and selling it. Then your course is up and you can go fly to, you know, sail to Bermuda, relax. No, no, the work begins then, right? Um, really what t- t- the key to selling a course is you want to create valuable free content that leads up to that sale. Uh-huh. And that valuable free content is behind an email wall. Okay. I see. So, so my great tool for this is lead pages. So do you, Pat, we're, we're both great affiliates and users of lead pages. Mm -hmm. Um, we both are, it's the easiest way for creating opt-in pages and also these types of pages I'm going to mention. Um, but the end of the day, a big mistake that people make with courses is they just, they get, they do all the things I just told you, Pat, and they create, let's say a sales page one way or another, or, and then they send out a list and they're to link to everyone and say, go, go, go buy. Yeah. Everyone buy. Everyone buy go to the sales page, right? And they hear crickets. And that's because the launch is a process. Um, you know, and obviously Jeff Walker made this famous, um, if you will, but a launch is a process that takes people from a free piece of opt-in content to more opt-in content than to a timed launch that has set start period and end period where the cart is open. Okay. And that's at the end of the day, what you're going to do. So for example, um, that's why I recommend a three-part video series for doing this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and people can opt in for the three-part video series. Um, you go through three videos, and essentially, I'm giving you the obviously the very Cliff's Notes version of this here. <laughs> right, but, right, right. Um, is they go through the three video series, and then at the end of the video series, they get a pitch for the course um, during a certain period of time. And I can't emphasize that enough: scarcity and having an actual period where your course opens and closes is critical to sales. So you would recommend that versus creating a course and just having it there on your products page. That's right. So I've tested them both and I'll tell you what we do. So first of all, I would recommend anyone with their first course that they do their own personal VIP launch first. This is that I teach this in Create Awesome Online Courses, but you do your own personal VIP launch where you're launching just to your own people right? Mm -hmm. And you walk them through this. It's kind of like a test. It's sort of like a a, a real beta test, but it's the actual launch to your own list. No affiliates, nothing like that, because it's going to be very hard for a lot of people to get affiliates and partners and things like that um, if they're just getting started or this is your first course, because you've got to kind of prove it yourself, right? Right. So um, at the end of the day, you do a three-part video series. You do a five to 10-day launch period where now they're getting the sales emails. The cart opens on date X at a certain time and the cart closes on date X at a certain time, right? Mm-hmm. And now the question is, and this is what people say, well, now what do I do, right? Yeah. And the mistake that I see people do, and, and I know this mistake because I've done this mistake <laughs> as well, is that you then just put it up there, Right. You just put it up there and maybe it's just a sales page. You say, hey, now it's just available for sale, yeah. right? Yeah. And you might get a trickle. It's kind of like, you know, walking up to, well, I was gonna give a horrible analogy. I'll just save it for another time. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, you might get the occasional home run, right? Where someone comes and they go, oh, okay, great. And they buy it, right? Okay. But let's take it two steps further. Step two, instead of having it up just a sales page, you actually have it set up as an opt-in page where people get your free video series. The one that you've already done for the first one launch. you've already done for the launch, you know? And, and you get a free video series, you go to this page, you opt in, you watch your free videos, and at the end of the free videos, you take people through their own little mini launch where you tell them about the product. Okay, oh, okay. so it's based on a timer, not based on a actual date on the calendar, right? I see, okay, so you have 48 hours to whatever... Well, the- here's the thing. So this is this is where I told you we're going to go three deep here, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going for the hat trick here. We're going three. You just said you went to your first hockey game, so we have to use a hockey reference. Yeah. Um, we said that before we got on here today. But um, so what I so at first I would send this is when I was figuring this all out for trial and error for my first course, right? Mm-hmm. Was at first I would just send people to a sales page, and it was like the tiniest trickle of all time, right? You'd occasionally get one, one or two here blah, blah, blah. They kind of went there, right? Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, 
I'm going to have them opt in for my free video series. And then I'm going to give them a little like open it at the end and say, hey, here's the link to buy. And then a few reminder emails. Okay. And that got more of a trickle, like, like maybe double. Right. But the difference was I didn't have people on a, I didn't tell them it was closing. There wasn't any real close. It was more like, hey, it's opening. And then like at some point it was like, hey, this is the last time I tell you about it. Because I didn't have, I could, I didn't figure that out yet what to do. But the second, but the second example, the one you just mentioned, you sort of warmed them up a little bit. You've given them some free content. Yep. And so that's helped. You never go for the sale right away. Okay. Like you're walking them through this free content. um, And then they go through, you know, a few sales emails. Right. Okay. And that worked much better. Right. But I learned and people are saying, you've got to have scarcity in there. And I said, well, I, I got to try to figure this out. So what we ended up doing in this, just this funnel has generated about on average, Pat, about 10 to 12 grand a week for us right now Jeez. on this funnel without me, which takes five minutes of work a week from a VA. But here's what it is. So it's the exact thing I mentioned to you where they go through a free video series right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the video series, there's an actual personal time launch for that person. Interesting. Elaborate. So here's how it works. Okay. And this is going to, it might go over a couple heads here, but I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, Here's how it works. It's a three week process. Okay. It's a three week process from start to finish when someone opts in. On week one, they opt in, they actually get a free cheat sheet. For me, it's a, it's a, and, and people can check this out and you'll even have a link for this, Pat, I'm sure. Yeah. It's smartpassiveincome.com slash cheat sheet. Actually. Yeah. There you go. And so you will have an act that you will be able to see this in action. If I want to reveal behind the wizard here, um, is on the first week, no matter when you opt in, no matter when you opt in, um, you get a free cheat sheet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. On week one, you get a free cheat sheet. Week two, I come back and say, Hey, Hope you enjoyed that free cheat sheet. Here's a free video. It's a first of a three-part video series, okay? And those videos always go out the same days just to the people that opted in for the cheat sheet the week before. Does that make sense? Got it. Okay. So then they're going to get a couple other emails. I've got a couple interactive emails. I got all kinds of cool stuff, but they're actually on now a timer with with the group of people that opted in on that first week that then go through the free videos in the second week and the, and the last video in the third week. And then the cart opens for those people on, let's say, a Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock, okay, something like that. And it closes that Friday at 11.59. And we've got special links that we create using a system called Timerlay, T-I-M-E-R-L-A-Y, which is one of the coolest little easiest tools I've ever seen. Time that, Relay. Timerlay. So it's oh. T-I-M-E-R-L-A-Y. Got it. And what Timerlay does is allows you without any coding to create little timer buttons on any page you want on your website or actually any page on anyone else's website if you wanted to as well. Uh-huh. And then it tells, then basically you tell Timerlay, hey, put this timer at the top of the page. And when it hits 1159, change to a you know new page, it says you missed it, right? So you're, t- you're actually taking it away. Okay. And then what happens is Timerlay will give you a link like timerlay.com slash pat slash, you know, November, right? Or something. Mm -hmm. And you can use that link that you send to people. So it actually expires on a certain date and time, which now allows you to add scarcity in your launch. And what scarcity at the end of the day does is it gets people off their butts uh, to make a decision, yes or no. And we, when we started doing this, we started going from like a random sale or two a week to now, like I said, consistently 10 to 12 grand at least on a weekly basis, just on that evergreen launch. So you are closing down for just a short period of time in between these sort of weekly launches. Is that correct? Well, just for that group of people. So on any given week, so let's just say this week, right? Uh I've got people at all the stages, right? I've got people that are opting in right now. And so they're on week one. I've got people that are on week two. I've got people that are on week three and I've got people that maybe went through the launch and didn't buy, right? Okay. And so you're going to end up, so every week, you're kind of like three weeks in, of course, every week you're opening it up um, for a certain set of people during a certain period of time. And mixing in these evergreen launches plus live launches 
is where really the real magic happens. Um, you know, where you can host your own webinars, you can host joint webinars with people, mm-hmm. um, all that kind of stuff. And then you really have something going from there. Now for the people who end up not purchasing, what, what do they, what happens to them? Do they miss out for good or do they just we push them? We just push them off like a little cliff. It's not <sighs> a big deal. We just push them. We just say, Hey, good luck. Uh, no, uh, first of all, they're going to get, uh, more free content from us. You know, like they, they're kind of on my, um, you know, my, my newsletter list, if you will. And they're going to get, you know, periodic free content. Right. Mm-hmm. But then what I do is about once a quarter, I do a public launch. You know, I'm putting that in air quotes, public launch, meaning that I will go back to everyone on my list, plus people on social media and stuff like that, right? Like you, that's hence the word public, right? Mm -hmm. And, and host a webinar, uh, usually a webinar or two, um, where you're basically saying, Hey, to the people that kind of missed out, you know, last time, Hey, here's another chance. And there's always going to be a percentage of people on your list that are ready to purchase, Right, but it might not be right now. But the people who didn't buy, they won't have another opportunity until that public launch, right? That's right. So you're, it, it is a true closing of that card. I mean, I, I, I hate oh, it's real. No, it's it's totally real. We've had okay. people like, and by the way, you know, we always we're always straight up with people. So if someone comes in and says, um, you know, I missed it or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. We don't. We just say, well, we're sorry you missed it, but keep an eye out for the next webinar that we do. Um, and you know, there'll be another opportunity to get in at that point. We don't kind of, you know, the easy kind of lazy thing to do there is like give them a secret link and say, Hey, you actually can still register, but you're going to lose. I don't like that. (laughs) Yeah. You're going to lose that whole trust that you, that you, and it's also, you made a promise to those people. You said, Hey, it's going to open Tuesday, close Friday for you. That's super sweet. That that's wow. This is fantastic. Uh, yeah. And so between that, that's how we've been able to, you know, generate, First it was first it was, and it was baby steps. My first course did nineteen thousand eight hundred pat in its first launch, right? Mm-hmm. My very first one to four hundred people uh, back in the day, and now you know fast forward. Then a couple years later, we were able to do uh, seven figures in twenty four months, which I thought was great, Man. right? And now it's well over seven figures in twelve months. Um, and it keeps growing and it's just, it, you keep learning these things over time, but it all starts with these little baby steps. I know some of the last probably 10 minutes we talked about here was some more kind of advanced steps, but I think that giving everyone the full scope of this and you included Pat it, is good to see kind of what's possible over time. Yeah. I love that dude. And we're, we've kind of done, you know, we, we've just provided a ton of free content just now. And uh, I would love for people to kind of check out that, that, process that you have and also get a hold of that cheat sheet which of course gets you on david's list i mean we're going to be honest here and uh that that link i'm about to give you like that i gave you earlier it is an affiliate link for david's course so if you end up wanting to know more about courses and getting help from david and, and his training uh it, i do earn a commission if you go down this road and, and finally end up purchasing i just want to be honest about that and so if you want that cheat sheet that david was talking about what what is the cheat sheet what what's on that yeah, so actually we, we discussed uh, a fair amount of it today too, which is good. So this is gonna be a lot of reminders and also even more stuff we didn't talk about today. So here's what you'll get. If you go to that link, um, you're gonna get, it's a one page, just like quick reminders of the seven steps to create, promote, and profit from online courses. I love so that. it's gonna be like my little timeline for you of the seven steps and some kind of bullet points on each step. And then as Pat mentioned, after that, I'm gonna have more free stuff for you where I'm gonna flush out more stuff. And just like Pat mentioned earlier too, you know, my free videos, and I would encourage you to do this when you do the when you eventually decide if, if you're gonna do your own course and do your own videos, they're real teaching videos. It's not like some weird hypey, like I'm gonna tell you the secret but I'm never going to tell you the secret type thing, right? <laughs> like it's like actual me walking you through how to come up with a course that sells. Um, we've got other cool stuff in there too. So you'll get all that um, over the next few weeks for sure. That's sweet. I mean, Dave is a great example for everybody out there listening to this now. Just the, the, how to do this, right? I mean, that cheat sheet is just like you said, one page. You don't need to create a super long ebook to give away. It's preferable if it's easily consumed. And so are you giving your audience, something like that. So if you want to check out that, sh- that cheat sheet, go to smartpassiveincome.com slash cheat sheet. Just one word. David, you, you rock, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we went over an hour and I appreciate you spending that time with us today. Um, I didn't want to 
I didn't want it to end because. Oh man, I could keep, it's just, it's just, we could have a joke there too, but Pat, it's been <laughs> great. You're, you know, it, it's always, always a pleasure talking to you, my man. I mean, you're doing amazing stuff here with, with your peeps and, and smart passive income. I mean, it's just absolute pleasure to just, it was honored just to talk to your audience and you and, uh, and keep it up, my man. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, for, for everybody out there, you know, David was a huge inspiration when I got started to, um, you know, just put, personality in, into your brand and, and to just be honest. And that's something I learned from you and I'm happy to pass that forward. So I'm so honored to have you on the show. And thanks again. Get that cheat sheet at smartpassiveincome.com slash cheat sheet. And uh, we'll hang up and I have some final thoughts for you guys. Thanks, David. Thanks. All right. I hope you enjoyed that interview with David Seitman Garland from the rise to the top.com. And actually, if you'd like to get his cheat sheet, it's completely free, seven proven steps to creating, promoting, and profiting from online courses, you can head on over to smartpassiveincome.com slash cheat sheet. It's all one word, smartpassiveincome.com slash cheat sheet. And again, when you go through there, you're going to get that free cheat sheet. It is very valuable. But remember, like David and I talked about, he's going to take you through that sequence. And I want you to pay attention when you go through that, what emails you get, what is in those emails, and kind of the experience. Whether you watch those videos or not, just see what it's like because this is a proven strategy that has helped him go from zero to over a million dollars in online courses uh, in less than 24 months, which is awesome. So check it out again, smartpassiveincome.com slash cheat sheet. And of course, if you want a little bit of handholding from David and join his course, uh, you can definitely do that too from there. And that's how you would get started with that anyway. I also want to thank today's sponsor for this episode, which is lynda.com, one of my favorite sites lately because it is the easiest to use and a very affordable place to learn with one low monthly price. They give you unlimited access to over a 100 thousand video tutorials ranging from topics like business skills to communication, leadership, management, productivity, online marketing, and even specific tutorials on how to use different types of software ranging from Final Cut Pro all the way to you know email management software and even Photoshop, which, which is really cool. I'm using the platform myself. It's really cool because there are new courses added daily. You can actually learn on the go with their mobile apps too. And, th- and these videos, they're not just like little, you know, YouTube homemade videos. These are like really high quality studio production quality, easy to follow video tutorials. They all come with a lot of tools to help you in your journey too with whatever you're trying to learn. So you got to check it out and you have to try the free trial. It is unbelievable once you get on it. If you go to lynda.com slash SPI, you can try uh, you can try it for seven days for free and get access to all of the courses they have to offer. Again, Linda dot com that's l y n d a dot com slash s p i thank you again so much for listening to this episode the show notes and the resources and all the links mentioned including today's sponsor lynda.com slash s p i will be available at smartpassiveincome.com slash session one three six that's uh, that's your shortcut for all those resources again smartpassiveincome.com slash session one three six and lastly as a reminder if you want to get that cheat sheet that david talked about to go through that process but also get access to that cheat sheet because it's awesome you can go to smartpassiveincome.com slash cheat sheet cheers take care and i'll see you the next episode of the smart passive income podcast thanks peace thanks for listening to the smart passive income podcast at www.smartpassiveincome.com Starting a business can feel daunting and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. That's why Terry Rice started the Launch Your Business podcast, another awesome show from the Entrepreneur Podcast Network. Each week, Terry shares strategic actions, specific tools, and what he refers to as high-performance mindsets that allow you to thrive under pressure. Recent guests include rapper T.I., Amy Porterfield, and yours truly. And Terry frequently publishes value-packed solo shows too, like this one titled How to Write Proposals That Get Accepted and Don't Take Forever to Write. Great stuff. So make sure you listen in to launch your business right now on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or Stitcher.